We all want to be equal, but it's hard to know what that should look like for us. Do we mean we should all start with equal money, equal rules, equal bodies? equal intelligence? On the other hand, it's not hard to know what the word equal means by itself at all. What does that tell us about the kinds of things that we can know versus the kinds of things that we can just have beliefs about? Let's consider. I can't get it off my mind. Hello philosophers, I'm Chico. Welcome to The Philosopher Show where we consider the greatest questions of human history. Again, equality seems to be really important for us. We hate it when we're treated inferior to somebody, and we hate it when we get less than somebody for no good reason at all. Now, today was my son's sixth birthday, and he wanted brownies, so we made brownies, cut them up into equal pieces, distributed them all, but imagine the following scenario. You're down to your last two kids, and they're both your children. You gotta cut that last bit of brownie into two equal pieces. Now, I'm not sure where I heard this, but I use this strategy every single time. I make the older boy cut the brownies and the younger boy gets to pick which piece he wants. And you should see how intense the cutting is from that older boy. He becomes like a mechanical engineer with like precision cutting. And you could put those two brownies together and see, ah, these are equal. So what do we know here? You might think, well, I know that these brownies are equal. And when I ask you how, you say, well, just look at them, right? Brownies are physical things, and we know by looking at them. In fact, this is what a lot of people call hard evidence. I gotta see the hard evidence, show it to me. Now, equal is a universal. It's something that can be true of a thing, can be true of more than one things at once, and can be spoken of truly apart from the things that have them. And if that's confusing to you, please go back and check out the Universals videos. They'll totally explain it to you. And there are other Universals that are true about these brownies. They are brown, sweet, rectangular. But notice two things. First, they aren't always going to be equal. They may have certain properties at one moment, but they're always changing. They're always in flux, and they're eventually going to lose those properties. The brownie will lose its sweetness over time. It will deteriorate in shape and color. And eventually, these two brownies are going to become unequal. But what about equalness itself? Can equalness itself become unequal? Well, no, that's just what equal is. So notice that the particular things, these specific equal brownies, or maybe two specific equal sticks, they can gain and lose properties, but universals, they don't change at all. Secondly, the pieces of brownie aren't purely equal. They might be purely equal to each other, but they're bigger than the piece that we gave to the one-year-old. So these pieces are both equal and unequal, but equalness itself isn't equal and unequal, it just is equal. So equalness itself, the universal equal, doesn't have this mix, but the particulars have a mix. They have a mix of opposites. We call this in philosophy a compresence of opposites. But you don't need to know that phrase. Now, Plato is one of the most famous, possibly the most important philosopher in the history of philosophy. He notes these two things about universals versus particulars. And he thinks that gives us reason to believe that universals are real and separate from the things that have them. In other words, equal is different than the two equal things that you see there. It's a real thing, and it's not just those two equal things. When universals are conceived the way Plato does, we'll call them the forms, with a capital F, so that we know that they are different than the particular things that have them. So I might say, the form of equal, capital F form. That way, I know I'm talking about equalness itself, as a real and a separate thing apart from these two equal things right here, or the form of brown, which is real and different from this brown and the brownie right here. So here are his two arguments. Argument one, the forms are the objects of our knowledge. Number one, universals don't change, but particulars do. Again, equal just will be equal. That's all that it is. But two brownies can be equal at one time and unequal at another time. Also, universals aren't a mix of opposites, but particulars are. Equal just is what it is, but two brownies can be equal to each other, but unequal to other things. So, universals must be different than particulars. Also, because we have that mix of opposites and because we have the constant flux in particular things, we can only have beliefs about those things, even if those beliefs happen to be true. But since the universals always stay the same, they always are what they are, we can have true knowledge about those things. Now the things that we know must be real, so the universals must be real. So universals are 
different than the particulars, and actually real, they must be forms. Argument two, universals are the exemplars by which we measure the particulars. Again, universals just are what they are, whereas particulars are these mix of different universals. Equal just is equal, but brownies are equal to each other, unequal to other things. So universals are exemplars, and particulars are like imperfect copies of those exemplars. Therefore, universals and particulars must be different things. Now, the particulars are real, and the original should come before the copies, right? So the universals must be real. So universals are different than particulars, and real, they must be forms. Now, there's also a third argument for forms. It doesn't have to do with knowledge, and it has another surprising consequence, so we're going to save that for another video. But what does all this mean for humans being equal? Well, number one, for Plato, the object of our knowledge is the form of equal. It should be no surprise then that we're confused about equality if we're studying particular things like brownies and humans. How could we know what it is to be treated exactly the same as humans if we don't know what the form of equal is? Most people, Plato believes, debate about these things and get all befuddled about them. What they really need to do is pursue the things that we can know, equalness itself, the form of equal, and then figure out how closely the particular things, which remember are just imperfect copies of the forms, how closely they imitate the real things themselves, the forms. And that, Plato believes, is the job of the philosopher. Now, how do we get that knowledge? The knowledge of the form of equality? Unfortunately, that's for another video. But let me know what you think. Do you agree with Plato? Are there these capital F forms? Or does this sound pretty fanciful? And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and tag a friend so they can enjoy this conversation. That's all I got for today. Adios.